Hey everyone, the name is Rector and I made a discovery last week and I didn't like it. I realized and for a second there I thought, I thought for, to myself that I was doing YouTube for the wrong reasons. And I, for a second I thought I was doing it because I wanted to be popular. What if I'm only doing this to be popular? What if I'm only doing this to build an audience? What if wanting to build an audience and wanting to hit new likes and uh, wanting to get more followers is clouding me from my work and from what I really want to do, you know? And uh, here I felt that I had created this persona. I feel, felt that I had created this persona that wasn't me. That I had created an image of myself as uh, some kind of public speaker that loved to be around people, that was always out there, always having fun, always... Uh, talking, always sharing, when in fact I would only do it for like 10 minutes and then be done with it. And I realized that I was wrong. I was actually not doing it for popularity at all. It wasn't that important to me to build an audience or to get more views. It wasn't that as important as I thought. What I realized was really holding me back wasn't wanting to build an audience, but it was wanting to be liked. I realized that the thing I cared the most about when I looked through my YouTube statistics wasn't how many people had tuned in. It was like I just browsed over that number. I was like, oh, it's increasing. Oh, it's cool. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't looking at, but I was really just zooming in on one thing. How many likes am I getting? How many negative comments am I getting? How many dislikes am I getting? That was what I was looking at, and that was what I was thinking about. You know, what I thought about the most was people that misunderstood me, people that were upset with me, people that didn't like what I was saying. And I worked so hard to remove myself from critique and to put myself in the position that where nobody would question or criticize me, that I was uh, really starting to take away from the originality of my content and of my theory and my message. I have a message, you know, I have a vision, I am a reason I'm being here. I came here because I had theories that I wanted to share, theories that I spent years building, years developing. I sat on the drawing tables, I read through hundreds of articles on neuroscience, on genetics, on psychology. I read through Carl Jung's works hundreds of times, like I was, went over his quotes over and over and kept on designing and thinking, how is this working out? And then I came here thinking, Okay, I have some important things to do. You know what those things were? I hope you do. Uh, when I say this, I hope you feel this. I hope you felt that I did this. My goals were to change personality type from who you are, how you look at yourself, how your family looks at you, how your coworkers look at you, to who you are as a passion, to yourself actualize you, to who you dream of being to who you are at your best, to who you are when you are in flow. I wanted us to question if we were all really right fully typed. I wanted us to question, do I actually like being the way I am? I wanted people to think, or am I doing things for the right reasons? Am I doing what I love or am I doing what I want people to like me for? And you know, in this I started investigating personas, uh, in this summer I was working on the power of persona where I was investigating different masks that people put on and why people put them on, uh, reflecting on why people get so attached to these masks and to these stereotypes, because I do think we are attached to them. And I think the MTI affirms a lot of these stereotypes rather than challenges them. I think a lot of these stereotypes inhibit our growth rather than encourage it. And what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to do is turn people into heroes, in a sense. And I mean hero in the sense of flow or in the sense of self-actualized. I think a hero is who you are when you're doing something that empowers you, something that gives you energy, something you love, something you're good at, something you're passionate about, something you think is right, something you think will make the world a better place, something that is in tune with who you are and with your unique way of being and doing things. And I think a lot of people can't tell the difference between a flow type and a persona, because I think we think we want things we don't want. We tell ourselves, I want this. I'm doing this because I want it. And we, get, we hold on to our personas, and we, we tell ourselves we want it. But what we really want is something else. We confuse ourselves that we want things we hate because we love when 
what we hate is gone. You know, we do things to avoid things. That's a common thing, a common theme in human history and development. We do the dishes because we don't want to have any dishes to do. We go to work because we don't want our boss to get mad at us. And we tell ourselves, I like to go to work because I went to work and my boss didn't get mad at me. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's how people think. That's how people start thinking. People start telling themselves, uh, I just don't want to be an outcast. I don't want to be excluded. And so I hang out with people I hate. And then I like hanging out with people I hate because they like me. At least they like me, even if I don't like them. You know, the human mind is uh, full of these uh, inconsistencies and in these issues. And uh, my challenge has been creating personality tests that get people to really be honest, that get people to really answer based on what they love. And uh, I came into this community with one demand on myself, and that was to provide meaningful and accurate personality descriptions. What I meant with this was I wanted my definitions to not just be placeholder definitions. I just didn't want uh, to say something that you could say that could either be right or wrong. I wanted to say something that had an applied value to psychology. These definitions on my, my personality type definitions would be in line with theory on flow and on health and on development. They would give meaningful insight into your psyche, into your emotional level of maturity, into how you're feeling and why you're, what you're struggling with and what you're going through. And uh, I came to realize that just talking about the MBTI didn't really help. Just using the MBTI titles and the type names that didn't really work out for me. Because people just read them, they just watched my videos and then they read all the other descriptions without critical thinking, just thinking everything was the same, just thinking everything meant the same thing. And uh, while of course there were overlaps, while of course there were similarities, that we're still investigating introversion here, we're still talking about intuition, we're still talking about thinking, we're still talking about the same dichotomies, we're coming at it from different angles. Do you think because you've been in an environment that has nurtured you and developed you towards doing it or because you genuinely like it? Do you get a genuine personal satisfaction from it or do you only get a satisfaction from it because it gets you a salary from work or because your parents give you a pat on the shoulder and say, good work, son? <laughs> Why do you do what you do? That's the core question I'm investigating. And uh, then I started out investigating personas. And you know what I ended up with was uh, 16 personas and uh, 16 personality types. 16 values or types of, that related to our passions and 16 personas as in masks, as in subdrives or secondary motivations or things we did as a means to an end rather than because it was genuinely good. And uh, so, looking at these 16, what I came to feel was this one core issue. To understand my system, people had to look at both left and right at the same time. It was like looking at two tables at the same time, and people couldn't really do it, so they forced themselves to look at one, uh, either at personality type or at Enneagram type. And... Uh, that wasn't really working out because it just made people confused and it made me confused. And I was trying to draw maps and lines between the two. So I created a lot of articles that said, this is the INFJ who acts out of a need to be nice. You know, I'm an Enneagram 9. And the INFJ 9 has a draw to be a public speaker because often that is how you solve conflicts. If you want to create harmony, you have to talk to people. You have to talk to the group. You have to make sure everyone is on the same page. You have to make sure everyone is in agreement and everyone is happy. And uh, in there, you kind of notice a person's, uh, the intersection between personality type and development. So I was making videos where I talked about subtypes and I talked about development. And I was saying, this is that development, that's that development. And I couldn't really see what was in the middle. And now what I'm realizing is I have to dedicate myself to that middle ground. You know, what's in between personality type? What's in between nurture? What do you get when you look at nature and nurture together? And then you get 256 personality types. God damn it, that's a lot. That's too much. That's too complicated. And you know, an ongoing challenge for me is... Uh, that the human mind is 
super complicated and uh, we only have 16 types to work with to explain so many complicated things and uh, how can I do that? So I was trying to create videos, I'm trying to make videos, I'm trying to speak, I'm trying to talk and I'm hoping that the words will come to me and I will finally make that video where it will all make sense and where people will understand and where people will see how it all intersects and I'm not getting there and it's frustrating as hell and that's where I feel stuck at the moment. That's why I'm not making any videos right now. I'm lost in the middle. Uh, is that a song title? Lost in the middle. Or is that how it goes? I'm sure. Uh, and uh, I'm realizing I have to take a step back. If I'm going to figure this out, I have to take a step back. Look at it all from the bigger picture. Draw, draw, draw. Theory, theory, theory. And I can't make any videos. And I'm sorry. I'll be back. I'll be back and I will make something truly original, something really crazy that will truly get people thinking, that will really change people's minds, that will really challenge the old establishments, the MTI, the Enneagram, and will get people going a little deeper, that will truly bring personality psychology into a, a position that is more relevant, that will connect to psychology as an institution, into actual modern psychology, into neuroscience and genetic research, and that will truly settle the debate between nature and nurture, showing people the intersection, showing people what they are, where they are, and where they should go, what they should do, what we can do to be happier, what we do can do to be to live a little more fulfilled than we are right now. And uh, of course, my Discord is open for anyone that wants to help out. If you want to help out, feel free to leave a donation on Discord. Feel free to jump on our, uh, on our Patreon page. Okay, I said it in the wrong order. Uh, come on our Discord page and discuss the theories. Come on Patreon and leave a donation. Uh, come on Facebook and send me a message on my email. I'm happy for all your input, all your thoughts, all your theories. And, you know, I listen to everything. I absorb everything I hear. I take in every little comment people are sending me. And I put it all together. I'm, I, I just draw dots, draw lines, see how everything fits. I mold, I synthesize, I warp, I process. And uh, in this, we are like a massive hive mind. We are like a global collective consciousness. We're all sharing ideas with each other and uh, making each other a little smarter. I love it. I love being on YouTube. Don't get me wrong. I love being on YouTube, but I need to make sure I'm there for the right reasons. I need to make sure that I can truly express myself and that I truly use YouTube to be myself, not somebody else. That is the important challenge of every YouTuber. And thank you for being with me in my process. I really am happy with the work I did last year, but I just feel I could go deeper. I just feel like I could get further. And uh, I feel like I'm starting to, I've taken a path as far as I could, but now it's time for a new direction. So what is that new direction? Let's see in the next video. Let's see in uh, 2018. Well, that's this year. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Talk to you all another time.